even though it looks like the end is not coming and I cannot get through it, God said, I will hasten my word to perform it over your lives. The numbers that are used are significant. One speaks of unity in God. Two, union, division, witnessing. Three, divine completeness and perfection. Four, completeness, creation, the world, creative works. Five, grace, goodness. Six, weakness of man, manifestation of sins, evils of Satan. Eight, new birth, new beginnings. Ten, testimony, law and responsibility. Eleven, disorder and judgment because he knew some of us were disordered. And there was a judgment coming. 15, rest. 16, love. 20, redemption. 28, eternal life. 30, blood of Christ. 40, trials and testings. 50, Pentecost. Even in the tabernacle of Moses, he knew he was going to send you a comforter. Even in the tabernacle of Moses, he knew the comforter was coming. And a hundred talks about the children of promise. You are a child of the promise. I am a child of the promise. He knew he had made a promise that these people here he has formed for himself. And they shall show forth his praise. He promised it to you. He promised you shall walk and not fall. He promised you that you shall live and not die to declare the works of the Lord. And in the tabernacle of Moses, it is shown. So how does the tabernacle of Moses ref refer to me? I was born and brought up in church. My mother was on, on the mother's board. They called her mother so-and-so. She sat on the board. I knew church inside out. I knew the politics of church. I didn't have a story like Tunde. I didn't go out, I didn't mug anyone, I never beat anyone, I didn't do GBH or anything like that. But both Tundi and I had to approach God the proper way. Even though I was born in church and knew it, I could quote you the Bible inside out. I could tell you who's preaching what and whether they're preaching good or not. I could tell you who was living saved and who was not living saved. I could tell you what was going on, who was teething money, who was doing this, who was doing that, who was living right. I could tell you who's going to drive the church van today, who's doing the minutes. I could tell you the whole church. But I still had to approach the proper way. I grew up in church. I lived church. I went every Sunday to church. I went to tarry meeting. I went to youth meeting. I went to Bible study, Wednesday Bible study. I went to evangelistic meeting. I was in the choir. I was church secretary. I did it all. Choir director in the choir, drive the church van, wait for everybody to cook their rice and peas, then they come in the van. I did it all. But I still had to approach God the right way. So my story is slightly different to Tunde. But I grew up even in the church in a broken home. I watched my dad beat my mum and then go to church and worship God. I watched with my own eyes my dad beat my mum till she lost a tooth and ended up in hospital, but still go to church and play the music. I watched it. Should that not have put me off church? Should I not be standing here because I said they were all hypocrites? It was in my house. I watched it. I watched family members play the instruments, but turn around and sleep with whoever. I watched it and came back into church and played. And the church danced, got slain, Shanda Mahanda, Shilo Sanda. And they played them pretty. And in the week, they were a mess. So should I be standing here to tell you that God can? Because according to some of you, no, I shouldn't. Because in my mind, the church was hypocrites. I watched family members go to rave, wine and grind, and do all the shabim, and come to church on the choir, and sing the church happy sang the church happy, did the little praise and worship, and again, a shanda mahanda, and a slain, and a run around the church. 
But then, the Saturday night, they was out again. And then the Sunday morning, they were back again. Should I be standing here? No. And for a while, I did. I thought, you know what, that's it. I'm gonna go, I've had enough. I'm, I'm from Leeds originally, if you hear an accent. And I came down to London. I came down to London to go to university. And I said, when I stepped in London, I said, that's it. I am now gonna go my own way. I've done my service. I did everything that the church asked me. I did everything. I got baptized at the age of seven. I even got filled with the Holy Ghost, well, baptized in the Holy Ghost at 13. But then I sat and I watched and I had chains. I like these chains. I had chains. And I sat and I watched. <laughs> I watched it all. In the midst of it, I watched it all and I chained myself up. And I came to London and I said, that's it. I'm done. I'm going to find myself a little party. I'm going to find myself a little man. <laughs> and I'm going to, you know, earn a little money and do what I want to do. And nobody, no church person is going to tell me what to do. I had people. I cried. There were nights I cried over church people. Cried tears. But I'd never forget that one day God stopped me in my tracks. In my tracks. And I had to approach the right way. I had to turn around and said, despite of all this, despite what I've seen, despite what I've been through, God, you are my God. God, you are my God. I didn't have a story like Tunde where he saw the innocent blood. I can't even begin to tell you what stopped me. All I knew that it was not right and that deep down I knew there was only one way. There is only one way. Despite it all, I know I was going good. I had the boyfriend that had the money. I had him, but he couldn't satisfy me. Only God could do that. And he changed my life. So I'm standing here today to tell you, church kids, for a second, and I know some of you weren't born in church, so just, just hold on a second, because you lot get a lot of the message, but church kids... Church kids, those of you who born, and I always say this, broke up in church, born on the altar, church kids, you have to come to God correct. It's not about what you see. Your mother, your father, the pastor cannot take you into heaven. This decision is yours, church kids. I know what you've seen. I know what you've seen, but people are people. Not everybody, we say in our church, not everybody is saved. And even though they're coming to church, not everybody is saved. But I'm telling you, there are saved people in the church. I had mothers that prayed me through. I had a praying mother. And I turned around and I looked at her and I said, if she could go through this and still lift her hands and say, there is only one God, how dare I? not do it. There are people that are true, but the only way to be true is to come to God correct. And even in the church, what's happened is that people have come incorrect. They've tried to get in through the walls. They've tried to jump over the walls. And that's where the problem lies. And God said, if you come through the gates, come and sacrifice, come and wash yourselves, come See the bread of my face. See that I am the light of the world. See that I am atoning for you and there is mercy at the altar. Pray to me at the altar of incense. See what I do. See if I do not come down in my glory. See if I don't come in your life. I love the Lord. I love him with my whole heart. I would not stand here today and tell you a lie. God is real. 
he has done so much for me. And even when I thought that I had it all, God says, you don't know what you have. I have better for you. Even though I had the man with money, he couldn't do anything for me. So God provided me a better husband, a proper husband, one that would be there for me in time of need and in time of joy. He provided for me. He provided me with things that I could get my own money. He provided me with my own so I didn't have to depend. God is good and his mercy is everlasting. Church kids, enter in. Give God a praise. Because even in the mess, God has prepared a message because you are the ones that will sustain those that come in. You are the ones that will have the message for those that are coming in, that are coming in battered, that are coming in bruised, that are coming in from all sorts of nonsense. Church kids, you are the one that have the answer. Don't let anyone fool you. Lift your hands to the Lord, because even when things don't seem to be right, God has orchestrated your journey. He's ordered your footsteps. He has planned the route for you, and he knows your end. He already knew where you would be, and he's orchestrating it. Who knows what you can do? Who knows what life you can change? But we sit and we ponder and we become dry. But God says no more. Enter ye into the gate. There's one more thing I wanted to say. Judah was situated at the gate. At the east side. That's where Judah is. And Judah means praise. And the only way to enter in is through worship. The only way you could have entered in was through worship. You had to go past Judah to enter the gates. And so when I tell you to bless the name of the Lord, and when I tell you to worship, it's not for me. It's not so that you feel good. But it is so that you could enter in. It is so that you can enter in. It's for your deliverance, for your joy, for your breakthrough, for your peace, for your love, for your righteousness, for you to be in right standing with God. It ain't about me. It ain't so that Seth could feel good that everybody was praising. It is about you. And if you need it, and if you want it, then you need to lift up your hands and give God a praise. If you want it, if you want to enter in, then give God a praise. Give God a worship. Enter in the gate. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving. And enter into his courts with praise. What is that talking about? The tabernacle of Moses. You had to go via Judah to enter in. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. For the Lord, he is good and his mercy is everlasting and his truth endureth for all generations. From the tabernacle of Moses until now. His truth endureth through all generations. Lift your hands and worship. Lift your hands and glorify him. Those of you that were born in church, lift your hands and worship God. Because even in the mess, he can sustain you. You have a testimony of peace you have a testimony of joy my God you are my God my God you are my God hallelujah